All right, so now that we have the logic in place to properly send a block to another device, next up what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write out all the code to properly accept the block. Now, before we just hop into writing the code, as always, we'll go ahead and take a look at exactly how this is gonna work. So what happens is whenever TNBOS receives a block from the core server, the first thing that it does is it looks at this field right here, the PID. Now remember this PID, the process ID, is the same as the app ID. So this is essentially how it knows which app to route this block to. So once it has that, again, it's gonna route it to something called the app router, basically passing it off and say, hey, speed test, this block is for you, you take care of it from here. Now what the app router is gonna do is it's gonna look at this field right here, this FN. And again, this is pretty much a remote function call. And for each of these function calls, we're gonna have a separate listener set up. In other words, just like the function itself or a function handler. So since we have two functions in the speed test, one ping, one pong, we're also gonna have two listeners basically listening for ping blocks and pong blocks. So pretty simple architecture based on this payload. It knows which app to route it to and which listener to route it to. And just like last time, what we'll do is we'll kind of work on this from the inside out, starting with the listeners. And then once we have both those written, we'll construct the app router. And then last but not least, we'll plug it into TNBOS to say, okay, I'm now ready to start listening to speed test blocks. So for these listeners, I like to organize those by creating a new directory called listeners. And just like basically every other name of convention, the function name followed by listener is the name of the file. So ping listener. And from here, let me just go ahead and first import everything that I need to. And okay, so I'm gonna make a function called ping listener. And these listeners are all gonna follow the same convention. Whenever they're called, they're passed in three parameters. The first one is the block itself. The second one is a dispatch param. And this is, I'll talk to you about this in just a second, but the last one is the network ID. And this is just the network that it was sent over. And the reason that we pass in dispatch as well is because very often whenever data is received, what happens is this listener is gonna first validate that data to make sure that everything is received in the correct format. Pretty much like you're setting up a, a server or API call and you need to validate that the client sent in the right format. Now, after this, usually one of two things happen. Once you have valid data received, you're either gonna dispatch something to your Redux store or you're gonna send back a request. Now, in this case, once we receive this ping and we validate it, and all this validation is gonna do is make sure that the run ID is valid, a valid UUID. And after we know it's valid, what we're gonna do is just send back that ping block. However, a lot of the time, for example, in this chat app right here, Whenever another device sends you a chat message and you receive it and validate it, then for example, you would wanna set it in your chat store. So that is the kind of basic flow of this. Now, because we're not gonna be dispatching any data in this listener, I'm just gonna replace that dispatch variable with an underscore. And also let me go ahead and export this. It is the default export, all right. Now, right after this, what I actually like to do is curry off in anonymous uh, async function and let me do that right now so async i'll say now the reason that we need this to be async is like i said once we validate that data we're going to be responding by sending back a pong block and for that we need to await it so uh, there you go that's a story about that and i also am going to throw in a try catch statement here and for this what we can do is if we wanna get really fancy later on, we can handle this error by sending back the other device a proper error message and I don't know, maybe have some UI to have like a toast appear on the screen or something. But for right now, keep things simple. Holy moly, what's going on here? Let me just go ahead and log out this error. Actually, let me do console error error. And I'm also gonna display an error toast. And this is just for me, debugging purposes, whenever we get one, since I may not be looking, one second, let me, uh, since I'm not often looking in the console all the time, just I have something uh, pop up on my screen and then I can check the console. But this is the basic flow. Again, 
just to kind of uh, structure everything out, we'll say validate data. And then once it's valid, respond by sending back pawn block. So to validate this data, what we need to do is, okay, we need to pull off the params because that's where the run ID is. And essentially all we're gonna do, like I said, is make sure that run ID is a valid UUID. But before I do that, let me go ahead and destructure some things from the block. And that is the uh, payload, first of all. And again, this is where those params are. And then I also wanna check the sender, so. And the sender is gonna be needed whenever we are sending back that Pong response, we need to know who to send it to. So there you go. And then const those params, I can just destructure those from payload. All right. So these params right here, if I pull open this, you can see that these pink params are just gonna be equal to a run ID. So in our validator, we can probably write it right here, but just to keep everything standardized, what I do for all my validation is I create a new directory called validators. And then you can probably guess what I'm gonna do here. I'll just say ping validators. Now for these validators, I'm using the yup library. And I'll show you how we can validate this right now. So make validator, I'll just say ping validator. And we are basically ensuring that we have an object whose key is run ID and whose value is a valid UUID. So to verify that, or validate, I mean, we can just say object. Now in here, we are just gonna say run ID. And that's the key that we're gonna be looking for. And what is the value? Well, according to yup, you say yup string. And you also need to say that this is required. And then in addition, one last thing, it already has this method, method built in, which is UUID. So again, we're gonna be passing in an object in here, which is just our params. And it's gonna make sure that it conforms to these rules. If it doesn't, then it's gonna throw a validation error. So that is why this is essentially gonna be handled by this logic right here. And to use that validator to actually validate our data, what we need to do is await it. And it was the ping validator, I already have it imported. And then on that, we call the function validate and pass in the data that we wanted to validate, which are these params right here. All right, so we can remove this comment as well. And actually this is supposed to be pong block. Now under here, what we can do is we can await that pong block. And again, this pong block, what it does is it takes a network ID, params. <laughs> you guys hear that? It's like a monster truck or something outside. All right, anyways, getting a little bit distracted right here, okay. So the network ID and the params and the recipient, which is just a sender property from the block right here. All right, pretty sweet. And again, the reason that we don't have to have any additional checks, we can just write it underneath this validator is because if this data is not valid, then it's just gonna throw an error right here and break out of this block. And then just, uh, this is our error catching logic right here. So anyways, that is our listener function. And let me actually go ahead and write in, how do I wanna do this? I'll go ahead and write the Pong listener real quick. So under here, gonna make a new function. And I'll kind of just make this a placeholder right now because we wanna be spicing this up in just a bit. But for right now, what I'll do is just to make sure that like things are kind of structured together, I'll just log everything out. All right, so console log block. And dispatch. And the network ID. Now I'll remove those. So of course, the Pong listener is eventually going to, uh, whenever it receives the Pong response, then it's gonna like, uh, set the response status and the response date and set everything in Redux, but I just want to keep this uh, video a little bit lean. So on that note, now that we have both our listeners structured, I'm going to go ahead and create that index file. 
just aggregate everything. So there we go. So popping back open our diagram, what we did is we just wrote these two uh, components, I guess, not actual components, but like pieces of the system. So now that we have these, the next step is just to aggregate them into our, our app router. So whenever this app router receives a block, it knows which one to send them to. And for this, I will make a new directory called routers, and I'll just have one file in here, and I'll just say app router. Let me go ahead and close those. All right. So I'm just going to have one constant in here, and I'll just say app router, and this is going to be equal to this. Come on, there we go. All right. So the standard for these app routers is that whenever TNBOS finds a matching process ID, it's going to send it to this app router, and it's going to call this function by passing in a block first. And then let me actually steal this too lazy to type out definitely could have just typed it by now but it's, oh, wow could have typed it like eight times by now all right it's going to pass in a block and then dispatch and then the network id which is a string and then remember the main job of this app router is to figure out which listener to forward this data to so to do that we first need to pluck off some data from this block and let me just say this So from the block, what we wanna do is we wanna look at the payload and we're gonna be looking at the function and also the process ID. And now based on that, we can figure out which handler or basically listener to call. So I'm gonna make a constant called FN handlers and the keys of these are gonna be the function name in that the value is gonna be the listener. So let me do this. So the type of this is an app data handlers and i'll just show you what this means again just a uh, dictionary of these functions right here a handler to handle app data and like i said the keys of each of these is going to be the function so for ping we are going to be forwarding that to the ping listener and when we receive a block for the Pong function, of course, that's gonna be sent off to the Pong listener. And now just to get my handler, I'll say const fn handler is equal to one of those function handlers that we just declared above. And for the key, I'm just gonna be passing in this function from the block payload. So that is gonna give us one of these, hopefully. However, there is one other edge case, and that is this. Let me see if I can well, we don't need to look at it right now, but if we ever, where are you at, lucid chart? Okay, so if we ever kind of structure a block incorrectly and we are sending it to the right process ID, so speed test, but we're sending it to a function that doesn't exist, uh, I don't know, maybe we had a typo or something, we just need to account for that. So we'll say if there is no FN handler, <laughs> If there's no FN handler, that's uh, a little inappropriate, but all right, what do we want to do? Well, let's just go ahead and display an error toast. And we'll just say something, actually, let me steal one from chat. So chats, where you at, routers. All right, we'll just steal this logic. So if there's no FN handler, which means if you just, you know, had a typo in the function name, we'll say this process ID dot function is an unknown speed test function, and then we'll just return it right there. Otherwise, if you do have a valid FN handler and you spelled everything correctly, got the right process ID and a valid function name, then we're just gonna call that handler. And again, remember each of these, which is just the listener, it accepts the block, dispatch, and network ID. So again, block, dispatch, and network ID. And there you go, that is our app router. And again, that is this right here. So now that we have all of this logic written, the last thing that we need to do is basically write the equivalent of this arrow, just letting TNBOS know that we have a new uh, app router 
in that if it ever receives a block, it can begin routing data to the correct listener. So to do that, it is pretty easy. Actually, let me close these to the right. All right, so in my speed test registration, let's see, under speed test, I'm gonna go ahead and import this in, all right. So this app registration also takes an optional router uh, property, a router key, and this is just gonna be equal to whatever your app router is. And again, I'm just importing this app router that we just wrote right here. And then the last thing is in this app registry, right here under app routers, we just need to tell TNBOS for any speed test blocks that you receive, then go ahead and route it to this router, which is the speed test registration router. So speed test registration router, just like that. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna open my MacBook and I'm gonna pull down uh, this code and then we'll kind of test to see if everything's working. All right, so I got TNBOS running, the latest changes pulled down, now is the moment of truth. So if everything is working correctly, when I hit go, uh, just to, again, before, I know I'm building up the suspense right here, but what should happen is that the uh, my MacBook or the device I'm sending it to should receive this ping function call. Uh, everything should be valid as long as we didn't make any mistakes. And then once it's validating, it should send back a Pong block. And since we have this listener set up um, on this device, I will receive this Pong message. And then this is just gonna print out the block, a dispatch, I don't, this is probably gonna look weird whenever it prints this out, but also the network ID. So, pop this open, send it. All right, oh, beautiful, look at that. So again, this is our block. Uh, of course, we have to do something a little bit more smart than just log this out. And this is our ugly dispatch in the network ID. Pretty sweet. Let me just uh, look in the network, make sure nothing's breaking. Nice, beautiful. So we have some life here. We have our two devices communicating with each other. All right, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pumped up now. So let's see, in the next video, we uh, just have to spice a couple things up. Of course, still gotta work on this timer. And then actually what we're gonna be doing whenever we receive these Pong responses is we'll calculate the difference between whenever I first sent that block and whenever I received that response. And uh, of course, dispatch everything to Redux, log it out in this history table. So yeah, looking forward to it. See you next time.